Hey friends, it's Sarah and today I want to talk about episodes 7 and 8 of Amazon Prime Video's Daisy Jones and the Six TV show. So I think these are actually my favorite episodes of the series so far. I have been very medium <laughs> about the series and some of the episodes have felt very long and kind of boring, but these two were pretty action-packed, focused on things that I enjoyed more. And they also covered, I think, parts of the book that I was less invested in, so I didn't care as much if they deviated a bit from the original source material. When I reread the book this time, I had completely forgotten that Daisy like gets married to Nikki and everything, so uh, I was not super into that, and so seeing it in translated into TV and adapted was like, yeah, that's fine, whatever. But let's, let's start with episode 7, getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. So episode 7, I love that it was... Oh, Hello, Parsnip has come to join me. So I really liked episode seven. I know uh, some people are saying that they didn't like all of the stuff in Greece and the like Daisy and Nikki stuff was kind of meh. And uh, that's fair, but I really liked the Simone part of this episode. I loved following her and her relationship with Bernie and they're them kind of like making their own way in the music scene. Cause the last few episodes they were like, Someone's going to New York and they show her like getting off the bus and then they just like <laughs> leave her there for a full episode and a half and you're like, is she okay? Simone, are you there, girl? Do you need help? And then finally we have an episode showing what happens when she arrives in New York. I love the discussion around like it's hard for her to make it because she's black and so they have to like do everything themselves. They like press the records, they distribute them like by hand to people to get them played and then they kind of build up their success in that way, whereas you have, you know, Daisy's story where she was literally pursued by a uh, music producer to make music because he was like, ooh, you've got something. And just like the absolute difference between like Daisy, who was untested but was like pursued to be a musician, versus Simone, who like does backup vocals, she's got the chops, they know she's good, but she still has to do everything herself because she's black. I also loved Simone's disco outfits. I thought she looked so cool and she just looked so glamorous and like a pop star in a way that I don't think any of the other characters have so far. I also was so happy that Bernie just went with Simone when Simone was like, my friend is like having an emergency. I have to go around the world. And Bernie was like, are you sure you we have like big career things happening? And Simone was like, no, like I have to go. That Bernie was like, okay, I'll come with you and just like packs up and they go together. I thought that was so supportive and there wasn't like a big fight. She was just like, are you sure? And someone was like, I'm sure. And Bernie's like, all right, then I will come with you. I'm not going to let you like leave you all by yourself to travel across the world to, I don't know, maybe your friends in jail or in trouble. I just thought that was very lovely and I just love these two so much. An interesting change from the book was that Nikki in the book is an Italian prince. And which, like, I don't know if that's a thing, but in the show he's Irish, which <laughs> felt weird because I'm like, is there, I don't think there's Irish nobility. In the book, you're definitely supposed to know he's a con man, but in the show they don't really play that up. You just, they kind of want you to accept that there's, he's an Irish prince or nobleman or something. And like, all his friends being like, oh, the art, I just create it for myself. I don't need outside validation. And I'm like, yeah, but y'all are rich. You're basically just like, this is my hobby. Whereas these people are like, this is my life's work. This is my career. So it's totally fair, fair and valid for Simone and Bernie and Daisy even to want to make money off of this thing because that's what they want to do with their life. Whereas I think Nikki's friends are all like independent, are like wealthy. And so they can afford to like just do it for themselves because they don't have to rely on that money to survive. And also they're probably not very good at it, like it's just their hobby. I also really appreciated Simone's friendship. I thought she should have been more ticked off at Daisy for like calling her as though it's an emergency to Greece and then she gets there and it's like, I'm just getting married and I won't get married without you. And Simone was like, you didn't even ask like if I have things going on in my life 
you just assume that like I can drop everything and like show up at your wedding and I thought she should have been more ticked off at that because like Simone had like brought bail money with her because she was so worried about Daisy like maybe being in jail or something I would (laughs) I feel like maybe I wouldn't yell at someone but I feel like Daisy deserved to be yelled at um at that point and so I was really happy at the end of the episode when Simone does kind of call her out and almost yell at her and calls her a selfish bitch because she is she's selfish and she's very like narrowly focused on her life and what makes her happy in the moment and I think part of that's that she's in an addict and you know she's always chasing that high but she is a selfish bitch. Simone is right and Simone is so willing to do almost anything for Daisy and I really appreciate that when she talks about like someone that you love will tell you the truth even if it hurts. I appreciate that we are seeing the lengths to which Simone will go for Daisy because of their friendship but that she won't fully entertain her bad habits or her mistakes. Like she'll let her make her mistakes but when she's going too far she will call her out and be like I can't support you in this and I think that is such a beautiful relationship between them. But oh my god when Daisy asked Simone if she was in love with her, oh Simone's face just broke my heart that she's like you think I'm only doing this because I'm in love with you like of course I love you you're my friend but like it's just so I feel like there's so much there of like being a queer woman being friends with another woman and then like Daisy's never had a problem with that and so I feel like Simone's like oh I'm safe she's an ally she's not gonna like assume I'm like a predator or anything and then to have Daisy who is like fed this by Nikki, turn around and go like, oh, is this because you're in love with me? And it's like letting Simone down. It was, it's just so heartbreaking. All the music when they were in Greece in the background was in French. Why? Are they just like, we need foreign (laughs) European sounding music and they just put French music over? Like, I don't understand. No one there was speaking French. It's Greece. Nikki's Irish and his friends are also not French so like I don't know why they kept playing French music underneath all the scenes in Greece. If anyone knows please tell me. I also loved when Nikki said it's easy to confuse a soulmate with a mirror because I think that's an excellent way to describe Billy and Daisy. They're not soulmates but they are a mirror image of each other. Like they share so many faults and so many strengths and when they are with each other like those personality traits are reflected back and forth and amplified so that they are at their best creatively but they're also at their most destructive and their most like addict like and i think that's just such a great turn of phrase and it really shows how like you know camilla and billy are maybe not soulmates but are much better suited because they are different people and they balance each other out versus the Billy Daisy dynamic which is the mirror relationship where it seems like you're perfect for each other but like you're really making each other worse and you're just reflecting back your own personality basically you're like they like turn around and see each other and are like oh it's me but don't realize that like it's all of me it's all my flaws too it's making me better but it's making me worse and ultimately not actually good for me (laughs) I think this was a really solid episode um my favorite parts were Simone yeah, all of Simone. Everything Simone did was amazing. Iconic, show-stopping. Bernie is such a wonderful partner as well. I love them together. I loved Simone finally being able to like be with Bernie in public even because they were in a foreign country that she like takes that step and says I love you back and they like dance together and kiss and it's so lovely and heartwarming and I appreciate that, you know, Bernie's like I want to be more open with our relationship and that Simone is like scared of that which is totally fair but that that's not a like breakup worthy issue in their relationship it's a conflict and they have conversations about it and you can tell like they both have very strong feelings but it's not like a you have to come out or break up and then Simone's also not like I will never come out it's just they're at different places but they are like compromising and working towards being in the same place with being comfortable with being open with their relationships and I think that was beautiful as well. Okay so at the beginning of episode eight Nikki walks in and he goes what who the fuck is this guy and then Ballroom Blitz plays and I think that's just an iconic introduction to a character for the band because he's gonna cause so many problems and Ballroom Blitz is an excellent song. Also we finally resolve the mystery of Julia looking like a whole grown child 
She's two and a half years old. What is that timeline? So they start, Billy's in rehab when Julia's born. So like, I don't know, maybe six months? I don't know how long rehab is. Let's say it's six months. Six months in rehab, he meets Julia. And then another couple months maybe of him not being in the band. So let's say that's like eight months. And then they start writing together. So that's like a year and a half a year and three quarters of writing an album. Is that a long time? I don't know. That feels like a long time, but maybe it's not. It does explain why the child, why Julia is suddenly like a whole grown toddler and no longer a little newborn baby. Um, I thought it was very hilarious watching Billy and Daisy try and negotiate (laughs) with Rod for like what they want in the riders and having like the different buses and everything. And then when they show everyone partying after the shows in Daisy's bus and it's just like, coke everywhere everyone's drinking and partying and i'm like oh my god that's i think we're finally seeing the absolute extremes of uh the drug use in this scene i think part of the reason why the drug use and everything was so toned down in the first few episodes is that when you get to this episode it's so much more it's so intense and you really get that sense of like daisy especially is spiraling out of control And that she is just like way, way too deep into this, doing way too many drugs. And it really like, that contrast is a lot starker than if you had kind of seen her doing more of the drugs. So like, I kind of get it. I just, I still wish there had been like at the beginning, a little bit more of her drug use, a little bit more of her being not quite tethered to reality properly because she still comes off as like, she's fine. She just every now and then takes a few pills or like drinks a bit or does some coke, but she like, she's perfectly fine. So it's not a problem to now like a complete mess. When they all like are walking through the fans after a concert and Eddie just gets like grabbed by a fan and he's like making out more like, let's, let's go bud, we got, we got things to do. Um, that was hilarious and I mean horrifying, please don't do that to actual people, but was very funny to watch. I also appreciated the moment when Billy is like offered drugs by a fan and like you can kind of see him being like, I know I shouldn't take it, but I kind of want it. And Rod just takes that choice away from him. He takes the drugs and is like, nope, let's go. And I liked that they showed Rod looking out for him in that way. He also talks later about like, you know, having to get fuel for the bus and having to take care of like hotels and everything. But I think that little moment also shows that he's like caring for them as people as well, which I like. Uh, We're finally starting to see a bit more of Karen playing and singing, which is great because she talks about how great a musician she is and how much she loves music. And it's like not really shown until this episode. Finally, once again, Karen's character is just completely fumbled. I'm still so mad about it. All of the sparkly outfits in this look super cheap too. Like Karen's got like a jumpsuit that's like sparkly and Daisy has a few like sparkly things too and they're kind of like tight but like I can feel I can feel what that material feels like and it's real cheap and like almost like see-through-y kind of and it's like scratchy you know I'm trying to think of what what sort of stuff I had I feel like it's like Halloween costume fabric and it just looks really cheap and like not great I don't know if that was really the look at the time I don't think so I think they just kind of didn't do a great job on those yeah and then again showing Billy like just going out for runs and everything as everyone else is partying. I feel so bad for him. Like he's doing such a good job. So proud of him for staying sober, but like it must be so tough when you want to like celebrate the gig you just played and you did a good job and you want to hang out with your friends, but they're all out doing drugs and everything and you can't, you can't spend time with them. The River is a very good song and it sounds like so much like Fleetwood Mac that if I hadn't seen the show and you'd played me like a bunch of Fleetwood Mac songs and like put this in there, I would have believed it was Fleetwood Mac. Um, (laughs) I also like, I know the first few episodes I complained that they kept playing the same songs over and over, but now I feel like the new songs, we've barely heard any, like you hear like a little bit and then like, that's it. So I kind of wish, I don't know. I understand that we couldn't have had those other songs earlier, but I kind of wish we had a more spread out selection of songs because I felt like, there was like the six songs and we had that for two episodes and then we had like the Daisy Jones and the six like we had Honeycomb for like three episodes I felt it felt like we just listened to Honeycomb over and over and over again and then now we're starting to get like some more like the last three episodes we're getting like little snippets of each song but I just wish that we had less Honeycomb and a little bit more of everything else and it was a little more even I mean storytelling wise you can't really do that so I get it. I also love Graham and Billy breaking bottles together and like bonding. That was very lovely that even though 
Billy doesn't really want to talk about it, Graham can still support him by just giving him stuff to smash. And then Camilla comes out to visit and she's like, let's go to the party. And I just, this I think is one moment where Camilla's not being a great partner because Billy's like the only sober person there. He's surrounded by all this like drug use and alcohol and Camilla's I know she wants to see her friends and everything, but she also is not like sticking with Billy. She's like, oh, I need to go say hi to everyone. And he's just kind of standing there like, this is really hard. I felt really bad for him in that. And I felt like Camilla was not doing a good job of being a good partner. She should have stuck with him. If she forced him to go to the party, then she should have stayed with him the whole time. I did like though, when they were given champagne and she like takes his champagne glass away, that it wasn't, it's just like a casual, like, nope, don't worry. I will hang on to that. And that's mine. They do confirm that Camilla and Eddie s cheated, um, heavily implied that they slept together, which was disgusting. I hated that Camilla said, I'm glad it happened, but it's not happening again. I wish she had said, I regret this and I'm so sorry. I should not have done that. And I now, and I shouldn't have like let you think anything else would happen. And yuck, 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 yuck. I shouldn't have used you to get back at my husband <laughs> or to like get an ego boost. Don't like that. And then Daisy just like doing drugs in the little song, like just stopping singing, going over, doing a line, and then being like, all right, back to the song. It's just like, oh no, 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 no. And then like, you know, she hits her leg on the drum kit, is bleeding everywhere, and it's stumbling around and forgetting the lyrics. And you just really see like this horrifying decline in her. And Nikki's still like feeding her drugs. It's, oh. And then Billy, poor Billy is trying to take care of her while she's like bleeding like crazy. And then she's like, how do you take care of me? I'm now going to sing the one song that you don't want me, you don't want to sing. And then like sings Honeycomb, Acapella and just, ooh, 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 real bad. I didn't really like the part where Carrie admitted to sleeping with Graham because like the guys are bugging him and being like, how are you still not sleeping with anyone we have so many girls uh and they like make a bet to see if he would sleep with the fan who propositioned him and he doesn't and then they're like is your dick okay and karen's like it's great we're sleeping together and they're like haha so funny and she's like oh yeah and then starts like making out with graham it felt very weird and stilted and like why why would she sacrifice her career for his ego and he wasn't even that upset about it i just it was a really weird choice i think it was the wrong choice they once again continue to misunderstand and hurt to karen's character i'm very curious about what they're going to do with karen and graham's storyline because we only have two episodes left i don't know are we gonna get like the reason they break up in the book or what? I don't know. But I just, I don't think I'll like whatever they do with it, to be honest. Um, and then we have the big, oh, the big, the big concern. Uh, at the end where Daisy has OD'd and Billy actually finds her on the shower floor. I'm not sure how I feel about the change because in the book, she like kind of wakes up on her own and realizes that, and like Nikki's there and he's like, oh my god, you were like, passed out and like you couldn't get you to wake up and I didn't know what to do and then she's like this man who I married who is my husband thought that I was dead and all he thought to do was put me in the shower and that's kind of her realization of like this is not a person who cares about me at all because if he did he would have called someone to get help but in the show we have like Billy kind of barging into the room because he wants to fire Daisy from his band. Ah yes, we see how you really feel, Billy. But he barges in and Nikki's like, no, 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 everything's fine. And they find Daisy in the shower and then Rod's calling like a doctor to come hopefully revive her. Uh, also really, really telling about how much drug use there is and stuff because Rod knew exactly what to do and was like really chill and like, okay, we're gonna do this and give her some like, yeah, like alcohol to try and like revive her, like to have her smell the alcohol and try and like revive her. And then he's like calling the doctor and there's like a code for like a toothache in room, whatever. And then Billy's like in the shower holding Daisy and being like, wake up, wake up. And I don't know, it'll be, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Like, will she wake up and, you know, will she have that realization that like Nikki put her in the shower? Will it be like a self motivated thing to like break up with him or is it gonna be like billy being like he put you in the shower he didn't do anything 
he's not he's not good enough for you he's not taking care of you properly because I do want it to be Daisy doing this for herself and like realizing it for herself because I think they mentioned it in one of the earlier episodes about like you have to want to get sober for yourself and so I think that's really important in her journey to have to want to get better for herself and not like depend on other people like not depend on Billy to tell her what to do. I think it was very emotional and well acted uh, with Billy wanting her to wake up and it did really tug on my heartstrings. It's a little sad. So that was well done. I just, yeah, I am, I think withholding judgment until we see the resolution of it, until we see what they do with it. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the latest two episodes from Daisy Jones and the Six. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for the last two episodes. Maybe I'll do another like reaction video like I did last time. Um, if you want to see my thoughts on my on the previous episodes, I will link those videos down below. But yeah, I don't know if you have a particular video format you'd like me to do for the finale, the last two episodes of Daisy Jones and the Six, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do. Let me know what you guys are thinking of these episodes. Are you also Simone fans? Because I know there's a lot of discussion around like Daisy and Billy and Camilla or like Eddie and Camilla. And I just, I just love Simone. I think she's so good. The actress who plays her is amazing. And I did not expect that to be one of the highlights of the show, but it definitely is. Thank you so much for watching this video and for watching my other Daisy Jones videos. It's been such a blast talking with y'all in the comments and I love hearing other people's opinions and like people who liked different parts of the book than I did, how they interpret the show as well. So that's been super fun. Please keep commenting and I hope to see you next time. The Amazon Prime videos. Ne Netflix. Why do I keep saying Netflix? It's not Netflix. Amazon is really doing the sapphics great in the like two shows that I've watched. Also, A League of Their Own, incredible, amazing sapphic women. I can't believe they're only getting four episodes for the second season. That is blasphemy. Jeff Bezos, I will have your head for that.